Yes, I'm not there. Yeah, audible. Yes. Okay, I just explained what's the workshop uh, today. So the project workshop, we have different sources available. Hope you are able to see my screen as well. Yes, yes. Oh, right. Yes. Okay, so this is a sample. Uh, brother, hi, brother. Sorry? Uh, good morning, brother. Uh, I just joined now. Thank you. Welcome to BDP workshop. Okay, so as per the use cases, we are going to use some uh, Raspberry Pi simulator. So this simulator, we just going to be cooked up the data and continuously send it to Kafka streams. From Kafka streams, we are going to fetch the data via Spark using Spark structure streaming concept. This Spark version we are going to use with the Spark 3x. From there, this is going to be integrated with the two environment. One is raw data ingestions. It's as usual, the data is going to be stored into Hadoop environment. And using some airflow scheduler, we are going to migrate the data from raw data to Hive table based. So this is the one of the use cases. Another one, some aggregated data. We will be doing some cookup operation with the data based on some certain time. That data is going to be stored into PostgreSQL. In the PostgreSQL, we are going to use some time scale DB. So that time scale DB is going to be refer the data using Grafana dashboard. So these two use cases we will be going to combine together and we'll see in as a today's sessions. This is a plan agenda. Okay, hope you are clear, right? Any question on this? Okay, fine. So hope no questions then. Let me going to start the sessions actually. So sources, how the data I'm going to fetch it and I'm going to transfer everything we are going to see in step by step. So this entire the flow we are going to see with the multi-node practice. So this multi-node practice we have created via Docker images. That is Docker images is going to be run with multiple container in the back end. So there's a flow of the uh, function we have developed it. So you can see all the containers is running, but uh, this is not a correct thing. I can show you here. So here you can see all the containers is running. Each of them separate, separate container behavior is just started and running the backend as well. So this is the, this time I'm using only with the three node cluster because uh, multiple container we will be going to start at the same time. So I just using only three node cluster right now. Otherwise we may be going to start with the five node cluster as well. So three node cluster, each of the 5 GB RAM and the three cores I just assign. Based on that, it's just going to be reactor. So these are the uh, node information. So three data nodes is running with respect to three data nodes. Each of them two cores is assigned because there's a single node mission, but I just create as a multi-node practice for our future practice as well. That is the main reason I just created it like this. So if you want to see the data with the 00070 name node information, you can see all the nodes, how much the capacity is available. Each of them almost 250 GB capacity is available to store the data and it can process it at the same time. So in the same place, Spark also integrated. So Spark, whenever I'm going to submit the job, it is going to be integrated with our YARN cluster and behave in the back room. So those who are new, they may be get confused in this place, but those who have some knowledge in this big data platform, they can understand it. So later we will be discuss in detail more about Hadith and Yan in our training sessions as well. But this is the overview of what I'm trying to do. And what are all the practice you want to do? That it is we have separate Jupyter node. So this is also part of our container platform. So whenever you want to do some practice analysis, everything you can do via this places. So separate kernel for five, separate kernel for five spark, and separate terminal opens, you can use it as it is. The sample data examples I can show you. So this is the way the code you can develop and all the query with its output you can see. I can show you the latest batch, some references outputs. Okay, so some of the sample references I can show you. So here you like this. Each of the topic you can choose and understand what's going on. So we are uh, today uh, the streaming process. So we will not be using the notebook references because batch projects it might help you more. But uh, streaming process we have to plan to go with the terminal itself. 
Okay, so if you have any doubt in this, just ask me. I guess I will be going to start. Okay, fine. Then no questions. I will be start now with our actual sessions. So first, as per our agenda, I just going to be convert the uh, simulator sources to Kafka environment. So for this cases, I have to create the Kafka topics and I have to migrate the data as well. So I just going to be open the terminal from here onwards. Where is Kafka? Kafka, yeah, Kafka master is available. Okay, so Kafka topics we can create here and we can practice with that. Okay, so no Kafka topics is available. So I may be going to create a Kafka topics. So I'm just going to be create. Topic FKTPK something I may be going to create in bootstrap server. I can use the same. What else? Okay, so topic created. Let me go into verify the topic. Okay, topic is available. Let me go into display the topic as well. So it's a single replication followed and one single partition counter is just created and uh, the topic name we are going to use KFTTBK1. So this topic, we are going to send some data, whether it is going to be received from this Kafka server as well. That's also we have to verify. So before starting that, I just create that simulator. Mm, we'll do one thing. Okay, there is Okay, some of the samples are just created. Here also we can see this information. So streaming samples as well as some data set references I just created. Here I'm going to load some sample data, which is going to be cooked up and run it continuously to us. So we have multiple use cases. So those are Raspberry Pi based use cases. So those are sample data I just created. So almost it's a four sensor references is going to be sent, almost 15,000 records, and it will be randomly generated and sent to us. Those are the plan. Okay, so this CSV file I'm going to upload here. As well as some simulator we have generated before itself. So this is our own simulator. Using this simulator, we are going to continuously send the data out to our Kafka and Roman. So, Likewise, you can use the different different sample data and that is placed into this play directory automatically just generated. The first Kafka IP is so Kafka 8490092 topic KFK TPK1 and every uh, five seconds once I'm planning to send the data. Okay, now uh, simulator is ready. It is adding a current date and then whatever the data comes. This is the way that uh, simulator has generated. 
So every five, five seconds once the data will be generated and sent to us. So 51604, 51609, 51614, and 19. So five seconds once the data has randomly generated and sent to us, sent to our Kafka cluster. So we have to verify the data has received in our Kafka cluster as well. So I'm just going to be use consumer. Console consumer dot sketch. As it is, in topic name as it is, everything I just pointed. Yeah, data received. So you can see whatever the data is sending, that data you can receive as well. The same time, as well as the sensor references, all the information is provided. First stage is clear. Any question with the first stage? We just can only just two states. The sources references can be true. That's it. Uh, one question. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, that, uh, the jar you already created huh? in mm. source, you click one jar, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a generic jar. So based on the sample data, if you're going to place it to that folder, automatically just generate the data with the timestamp references. Because oh, okay. again, again, you don't want to create your simulated data, right? Sample data, you don't want to create. Just to create an Excel file and store into somewhere and they call this new job, that's it. Automatically just generate it for your practice. It's a what kind of data you need, you can use it. As of now, I'm using with the CSP file with the Raspberry Pi uh, sensor references. Likewise, I may be going to use other data set, uh, different data set I may be going to use for my project references as well, right? So at the time, I don't want to start again and create everything. Just I want to create the CSP file and push it together. That's it. Oh, okay. Okay, okay because so multiple use cases we will be going to practice. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the jar file contain all the Kafka details and uh, pushing a data from the source to Kafka. Server. No, that jar you have to pop the arguments. Oh, okay. You are passing the arguments. So IP address, port number, topic name, and how many seconds once you want to send the data. Okay, okay. So everything you're going to place it. So if suppose instead of five seconds, if you're going to migrate into 10 seconds once, the data will be generated and sent every 10 seconds once. Because multiple sources, I want to test it together. I can use the same jar and place it into multiple data sources and execute from there onwards. That is also possible, right? Yeah. So likewise, we just generate this. Okay. Any other question? Yeah, I have a question like uh, here, uh, Kafka is reading the file uh, from the CSP that CSP has having all the sensor data, right? I mean, uh, CSP file will be read by the our jar and it just transfer that data to our Kafka sensor environment. That's it. So this is the Kafka cluster. This is our local. Okay, okay from this okay. local, we will be receiving into Kafka server. That's it. This is the thing. If I'm going to stop this one, this is like a producer now. So simulator, okay. whatever we will be generated, that's a producer. So whether the Kafka received or not, that's we are going to monitor it as of. Okay, okay. So this is one of the source data we Kafka mm. is reading from. Uh... Yeah, this is the server place. This is a separate container. Kafka container will be create separate server. This is going to be communicated based on the topic numbers. Okay. If I list any topic, I just provide any different topic name, it won't receive it. Okay, so that jar file is is the, all a Java code is there? I, or yeah, like... it's a completely Java. Okay. Yeah. Because we can create that simulators with our Python and other programming as well. But the CSP based to that has to be React, right? So Java is the best one. Because multiple okay. integration, we can do it together. So we just created. This is only for practice purpose. If you want to change the, you know, we are going to provide some assignments to you, right? You may be going to work with your own data set or business data set, something. At the time, you don't want to cook up, uh, create your own uh, simulator. Instead of that, you can use it to reduce your time. Only you yeah. have to concentrate with the big data in, on concepts. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, one doubt, Dinesh. Uh, can yeah. you give a quick overview of what you did? Like, uh, right Which one? Yeah, uh, like the entire thing. Like, uh, uh, what is Kafka used for? And, uh, can you give this uh, quick, because I missed out that uh, Yeah, this is the concept. Okay, this is a project workshop. Today we are going to discuss, okay? 
So sample data is available. Sample data we will be going to send. Sample data is a kind of multiple sensors available. For example, you can consider all the sensor will be sending their information to Kafka via streaming. Via real time, that network has to be transferred the data entire data to Kafka server. So this is till now this point only we have monitored. We just create the topic in Kafka. We are going to sync with the data with our sensor. That's we didn't do that. Once data is received, we are going to do some aggregation practice with our Spark platform, and we are we going to sh show the outcome in aggregated as well as draw data. Okay. okay. Simple okay. use case only. I didn't go in much. So yeah. whatever the data is available, how it's going to be raw data, how it's going to be uh, saved in the back end, how the shell queue system is going to be monitored the continuous data and moved into uh, raw uh, tables as well as aggregated table. So both we will be going to see it together. So aggregated data, we are going to see with some dashboard. Raw data, we are going to see in Hive table. Exit. That's it. Oh, okay. Now you are clear, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? Shall I proceed? Any other question? Um, actually, I have one question. So how did uh, we do the checkpointing over here? We will be creating the checkpoint to get the data while uh, insert into a Hadoop platform. I will show you the checkpoint codes and all. I don't like to boring you with the code development and all. Already code is ready. I just going to be mm -hmm. explain what it is because uh, two hour sessions, uh, three hour session. If I'm going to take, it's getting boring to you as well. The code is already okay. ready. I just going to be explain what that particular code is going to be react in the back end. Okay. So we are and going to mostly focus with the big data spark submission command. What is the back end uh, behavior is happening? How the executor is running? Such kind of concept we are going to be giving you because that's only okay. will help you to clear your interviews as well. Right. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Okay, great then. So now Kafka ready, as well as the simulator ready. So Kafka uh, getting the data properly from here as well. Okay, now we are going to sync with the Spark and we are trying to read the data via Spark itself. That's the plan. So for that, I have to open Python community. So my favorite ID for Python development center, so I'm using this. Let me go step by step v one. So here I enter the platform practice. We are going to start with it. Spark three expressions. So these are the packages I'm using right now. Afro two x and. So these are also the app for references packages, NumPy 1.24, Pandas 1.5, Psychop G2. So you know, time scale will be integrated with the 2.8. And PySpark is going to be worked with the 3.1 expressions. Okay, so because based on the compatibility only, our code is going to be run so that I just provide this Spark and its version references as well to you. you anything else? Yeah, these are the major important things. So now let me go back to the, our codes. So what we are doing right now, these are our sample codes we have already generated. So in this code, I just import the spots and there's the package references on that. And then I'm going to start our uh, you know, Spark cluster with the driver memory 1GP, executor memory 1GP with the three node. At the same time, three executors going to be run in the backend with one driver operation. This is we are going to see, and each of them are minimum we required with the memory over at one GP right now. So that's the reason I just create as well as the same right now. And deploy mode as a yarn and the client deploy mode we are going to see in our examples in a few minutes. So under, I just reduce the shuffle partitions for our performance to give a better outcome to us. That's the reason I just reduced it and bootstrap server, which is going to be read the data from our Kafka. So this is the Kafka server details. Already I just uh, hold this information in our uh, simulator as well. The same I just pointed here. And this is the topic name. So topic name is nothing but uh, we have created and we have sent some data to topic, right? That's the same information I just posted here. So Kafka topic, one is a small letter, I guess so. So starting offset. So I just want to fetch all the data at once and planning to see how it's look like. 
and then all the data I just convert. And once the data is converted, I just going to be sliced based on the columns. Because while I'm sending the data, I have created multiple columns, right? So this is a timestamp. And this is the device information. And then this data is kind of temperature data. This record is a kind of humidity. This record is a kind of pressure. And another one is water level. So, so four data continuously sending to us. Uh, this is the comma separated data. What I'm trying to do, I just segregate and create as a separate columns. This is what I'm doing right now. So using split regex reflex functions in Spark as well as the split function I'm using and convert normal timestamp to actual timestamp format. So date format, whatever we have received, that has to be converted here as well. And all the data we will be using, right? This is our aggregated data. This is a, as of now, it's a string data. I just convert into decimal format as well. Okay. Any question this? This is more important. To enter code, this is very, very important to us. Okay, great then. So DF3, what I'm trying to do? So I'm going to select the specific columns and I want to see the data in our enrollment as well. This is what I'm doing right now. So enter real-time training practice, you are going to see step-by-step -step command code development and all. But this is a workshop. I don't want, like to waste your time. I would like to give you as a crispy and a clear. That's the magic motive for me. So that's already developed the code and I'm going to execute on the back end. So what I'm trying to do, I just hold this data, the streaming information here as well. Let me going to open one more terminal. This is not required. This is not required. This is also not required. Okay, it's ready. I just open the code here itself. If any changes is required, I can do here as well. Okay. So and then I just copy this pop summit command with the yarn deployment. And you can see the outcomes. So number of executors, number of instances, I just already hold with three as of now. If I want to override that information, I can comment and override here. That's, I, that's possible. First, let me run it. And if you want to do some play uh, practice with our code, we'll do it in runtime execution as well. Okay, so the respective packages is going to be built in the back end from the Maven build places. So it's a kind of Maven dependency only the packages. It's just going to be downloaded at runtime. Once download is done, then Spark is going to be started. Yeah, Spark in accepted state. We can see this information in our YARN application as well. So now it is accepted state. Yeah, it's moved into running now. So from accepted state to running state is just migrated. And this resource is expected and hold with 7 GP total space, uh, total RAM and uh, four cores is just allocated because three for our executors, one for driver is just assigned and data also fetching from our code onwards. So I can see the data. Let me go on back end and see what is happening with our Spark 3 UA. Okay, so job ID created and it's just fetching the data step by step now. It's a micro partition, right? So micro batch scan reference will just happen. And if you want to go directly with the structure streaming, you can see this information as well. So data is already hold because there's a old data so that it won't generate any new records as of now. So whatever the data I just picked and it, how many inputs has received, how much it was processed, how much row just generated, and that batch duration, how long each batch will be taking the time, and the operation, each batch execution, how long the time will be taking care. There are new references in Spark 3x, they have added this gap, and you will be seeing with histograms as well. Now what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to start my simulator with uh, 10 seconds once, I'll see. Because world data is get ready. Now new data, whatever it is sent, that we can see right now. So the data, right? So you can see 530, 54 second. 
sensor 3, 105, 51, something it just sent. The same data is just sliced and they make it proper structure format. Same like each of the data is just generate and sending to us. Okay, if you want to refresh this page, you can see this some changes. You can see some data is received, input records, as well as the process rate and the input rows, how many rows, it's just one or one or two rows only, right? That information and the batch duration, how long it will take the times. So you can see some changes, reflections is continuously happening. Got it? Yeah, got it. So one question, like here, the statistics are shown by Spark only, by after reading the data from uh, Kafka, or uh, how this is generating actually? This is how Spark is going to be fetching the data. Every data in a streaming, right? It just receives yeah. as a micro partition. So how many micro partitions has received? How much it was processed successfully? Everything we are going to see in this dashboard on that. Spark 2x it doesn't available. Spark 3 only just introduced. Okay. So how much input raised? Records per second, you can notice it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see. Now I'm going to change and run it again with the size increased. I just going to be change a comment. I just add some number executor here itself. Oh, let me going to add it and increase more right now. So we'll see the different behavior with this uh, executors. So new cluster has start and running to read the data. We can see this information. So almost a queue is filled. And because the production queue, I just assigned up to 100. But it's just trying to fetch the data from there. It's a maximum capability to focus. OK, let me go into see this information. So different data we gave in this happen. Okay, so total size is assigned, 9 GP total, and the five courses are assigned as of now. So each container, one, two, three, this three node, okay, because two, three node cluster only we just started, two containers started from data node two, two containers start from data node three, and one container start from data node one. This is the much memory of information, and just fetch it from this each node as well. Okay, let me go into play with Another one, I just going to be changes values, memory, driver memory, everything I just reduced. Okay, driver memory, okay. Now I just going to be increase a driver memory, a number of executor I may be going to reduce to two. Driver iPhone memory, two GP, iPhone iPhone, executor iPhone memory, two GP. This is the thing uh, I'm going to do it right now. <clears throat> okay, I did it. I just fetch it. Let me go into see this information how much application is assigned. 7 GP memory is just assigned and three core because we just created num number of executor with only two and one driver to execute it as well as each of them two GP of RAM assigned. So based on that, three into two, six plus one is just assigned total size of the memory. Let me go into see this information. In real time, they may be going to ask the resource allocations and the size of the estimations as well. We will be doing from trial practice only as well. Okay, now you have some idea, right? 
how the spark submit is working, how the resource has aligned with the on mode. Any question on this? I just forgot it. Oh, no questions, then I can close it. If any question you can ask, you can see, I just stopped the simulator, automatically we just reduced to zero. There was no record for, so the streaming micro batches is coming as a empty. You can see completely down now. So tell them this is the places we have done. So sources go over how Spark is working. That behavior also we just monitor. Any question till now? Only sources, simulations, Kafka server generated, Spark structure streaming development. That's it. If no question, otherwise I may be going with aggregations as well. So quick question, like uh, what are the prerequisite, I mean prerequisite for this course, anything we know, need to know, like uh, Kafka or like... Uh... No, that all will be covered, only the basic SQL knowledge, it's a basic DDL, DML command, create the table, and okay. uh, delete the table, something like that, the basic and a common concept, that's enough. Mathematical references, yeah, that's enough. Then you can easily understand it and process uh, what about language and the, in the industry only uh, Python is like, uh, I mean, we should only know Python or like, because right now I'm actually working on Java language. So Python is going to be, I need to learn Python also, right? Well, Python um, is very easy. If you're already working with Java, Python is so, so easy to you. Once you enter into yeah. Python, you may be, uh, how can I say, you will not be interested to go with the Java again, I'm sure. Okay. Because Python is that much interest and it's compatibility. There's a the, plug and play, you can do that. Uh, sorry to interrupt, can you please share the surveillance of this course and when it is going to start, all kind of information? Uh, well, let me complete the workshop first. Only two points are still pending and we complete, then we will discuss the topics. Still up the entire video, we will be discussed, don't worry. Just give me some time. Okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay, then let's go with Postgres that aggregation data. So I have to create the table in Postgres SQL that I have to load this information as well. So let me go here. So time scale is a kind of separate node I just created here. So opening the terminal. PSQL, I expand you Postgres. Create database sample project slash p slash p or slash p okay what is the comment but slash c sample projects I guess yeah so uh, right now I am in sample projects slash is it. I don't have any table right now. Maybe I am going to create a table. With table, aggregate, that's a table I just created. Start time, I need to get some references with my code. There's a sample schema already I generated, so I can use it. Damn, so I guess it is it okay? Time run risk. You can use the same here. Not now. There is also not now. Time stamp T is it okay? Time run device name. The device name is always text format. 
Oh my God. <clears throat> it's the permit and then average temperature. Average temperature, double restriction. All are double positions from there. I can remember that. Okay, table created. Table is available. Slash D A D G R P Y. You can see start time, end time, device name, average temperature because this is aggregated data. Because while we are going, we are going to get only the average has of you know, the sample in the use case. So everything I just collect in that average, and this average is a double, it's a decimal places. So double position, I just create this table. So this table I just convert into hyper table right now. Hyper table, the table name. You may be going to use it. And hyper table will be going to be here. Okay. okay, now it's ready. So don't confuse what it is hyper table and all. We will produce the separate because there are post case references. Don't want to think much about it as well. Okay, now table is ready. So as per the our use case, we have to send the our data, whatever the data we have generated, that we have to send to first case equal. So second code I'm planning to show you. So whatever we have done the before, the data is extraction slices and dices. We have done here right now, it just create as a data frame. And then this data frame, we are going to send into our aggregate process. So separate class for PostgreSQL, I just developed here, the data will be sent to us. And this is going to be aggregated based on some windowing function, four seconds and two seconds references and order by windowing. And it's just going to be get the data based on averages. This is what we are doing right now. Okay. Mm. This is a class we are using. So this is the class, right? Each record, if it is received as a row level, it just convert. And finally, it's just trying to write into aggregated query. That's it. We will not be doing much. Here, the aggregation process is happening. So group by windowing based on the four seconds and two seconds once we are doing the windowing operation based on the device name, the sensor one sensor do we have this right? That's we are going to use it and to select the columns with the start time, end time references and device name and aggregation based on the averages for the four, uh, the decimal values. Four decimal values we have received, right? Humidity temperature records. That all we are going to uh, make some aggregate average function we are using it right now. Okay, hope you are clear, right? This point. Any question? No, no. Oh, great, great. So this is the final data. We are going to see what is the raw data we have received, as well as we are going to write the data into our uh, aggregated insert table as well, and this is the window references. So we will be going to see this data in console as well as our table. So as of now, this table is empty. So store from AGG underscore or PY. It's an empty table. But now once I run this code, automatically this data will be pushed to this table as well. Mutu from batch 28, right? Yeah, yes, bro. So just noted, if you have any doubt, you can ask me in your training sessions. Okay. Yeah. okay. So all the information I just already folded here. What I'm trying to do, I'm going to run with the code. So 
to same place, code is available. Let me go into submit our jobs. All other information already folded. <coughs> Nothing, no records as of now. I have to send some data. Maybe let me kill and add the lines here as well. Starting offset, okay. It was small letter, right? I saw that. So whatever the records just already sent, all the information just PDF and showing you. You can see the query generated, insert into this table and start time, whatever the record is just converted. From that particular class is a kind of data set operation is going to be run in the backend and it generated this select queries. So this is the help to ingest into our environment. Now let me go to our table and showing you with the limit command, limit five. You can see the data, the data is structurized and stored inside as well. So whenever the data I'm going to send to this producer, all the data will be received via Spark and is structurized properly. And then it's just going to be sent into our timescale DB. Okay, in the back end timescale DB, all the data is going to be stored successfully. Okay, you can see this average values, each of them separate, separate. As far as the, when the data start and when the data end, that windowing operation, all the reference information, we just hold up here as well. Got it right? Yeah, got it. Oh, so this data only we are going to show with our Grafana dashboard. The Grafana dashboard is nothing. We just want to add 3000. Okay. So this. 3000. I missed to add the data sources. Postgres. Or already I have Postgres data sources. Oh, already I have. Already I created this Postgres SQL. So this is already all the information, uh, username, password, everything I just pro provided. So automatically just generate with uh, my dashboards. Yeah, this is my dashboard, right? Let me go into open. No records as of now. And one more thing, I am using timestamp with the UTC format. Last 30 minutes record, and I am going to fetch it with every 10 seconds once from this table. This is my plan. Okay, no records as of now then. 536. 536 means timestamp UTC only, I'm sure. Ah, right, there is a UTC time only. So all the record, I just fetch it. And using Grafana, I just going to be monitor. So 15 minutes points. Okay. Let me send some data. Okay. Okay. Two executor running together. Java, Java, okay, nothing found. So, Java, I find Java. Okay, you see Java. I think Kafka, port number 9092. And topic K, P, P, K, one. And the seconds. 10 seconds once I will be sent it right now. So some letter ready. And it's sending the data. It is loading the data with the window in old window in references. And it should be reflective. If it is reflective, then our process is correct. And the last to five minutes record, it should reflect. Something wrong with our dashboards. Mm 
Okay, data source I have a which place already have one data source, right? Okay, maybe I have that data source references. All the information I hold with cover. This is class itself. So host is the host colon five four three two database name host is equal username post grades password also post grade and this has to be disabled version 11 times KLTV has to be enabled and we'll test the connections okay now connection is ready let me go back check the tower yeah now it's coming the data source is incorrect before so that it won't generate now you can see data has generated sending us continuous view. Okay. You can see the real time data as well. Whatever the data I just sent, the same data we are seeing as well with our dashboard of questions. That's a real time understanding. If I want to increase my speed from 10 seconds to five seconds, you can see the data a bit faster. Maybe I can add two, three seconds. Now. You can see the cursor, the points, data points is very close to now. So I didn't use slide durations, so only window duration, I just use it. If I'm going to use the slide duration, this data uh, graph will be showing you with very close and accurate. Okay, got it right, any question? Yeah, got it. Others? I can change into 15 seconds once, 15 minutes once also, five minutes once, whatever I need, I can change this under plus and all the information I can over. So this time only we have sent the data, all of the time it should be looking as an ideal. So we don't have any records. Hope you're clear, right? Till now, aggregations. Shall I proceed to next? What type of aggregations? Okay, you can start. So now aggregation we have seen. Now what I'm trying to do, uh, raw data ingestion second, I'm planning to show you. So raw data ingestion also, the code is separate. So here you can see all the data, whatever will be generated, right? That I'm trying to write into our Hadoop platform. This Hadoop platform, you can notice, this is the path I'm going to write the data as well. As of now, this play, uh, the path is not available. Here itself, you can see, okay. There is a common platform. You can do all your commands via terminal. You can use this notebook pad or you can use your this one also. What is that? Your kernel is also separate, separate notebook kernel is available. That is also you can use it for your practice. So no such file directory, nothing is available in the folder in Hadoop environment. What I'm trying to do while I'm running it, here you can notice the checkpoint location I just created. This checkpoint location is nothing but it just hold this information. So if any data is broken or any data is not correct, it's a corrupted, that will be folder. And what is the last of the differences as flow, all the information is pointed in checkpoint location and well. And this is the actual path, the actual data is going to be placed into this environment as well. 
So every 10 seconds once I just trigger and it just loaded because I don't want to continuous ingestion is not, I don't like to happen with Hadoop platform. Every 10 seconds once it just summarized and produced as a single record. Those are my plan I'm doing right now. Okay, so uh, till now, all the commands, all the practice, whatever we have seen with the previous code, everything is the same. Only small changes I have done here. That's it. And this code is generate and write the data into our Hadoop platform. That's it. First, we will see the samples. Then I will sync with the uh, airflows. <coughs> okay, same code. Now let me go into run it. Okay, no records as of now. Oh, sorry, this is also incorrect. I missed that Dr. TPK topic name, right? Where it is? Where I'm creating, I missed this one. Something wrong. What happened? Fail on data loss. Okay, I missed the command. Now let me see. Now data is successfully write into this environment. Okay, we don't send any data right now. Let me go into create Java Java. BDP one and I'm trying to write now. Okay, data sent. It must be right to the spectrums. Okay, every 10 seconds once processing time I set it right, I must we'll wait for 10 seconds. Because in code itself, I just add 10 seconds once. Processing time, 10 seconds. My data is not right. DF three and DF three on the right into CSP format of okay. I need to come to the beginning of Q1. Okay, I'm sorry.
Something wrong. <coughs> All the topic references are fine, then maybe I just convert into text one, text two. And here's something that I can log. Okay, data. Okay, both of them. Yeah, no separate path. Yeah, no data, data has generated and right. But your same topic will be sorry, your same path will be two topics will be locked, so data will be lost before. Now it doesn't happen. So DFS, DFS, I can take, I can see the data samples here. So some data is right now just stored into SDFS platform as a CSV file format. So the, whatever data we have received, that directly just ingested. Nothing happened. Now what we are trying to do, this data is right now in HDFS. On top of the layer, directly we can create as our own our table. Otherwise, we can create our new hive table and we can switch the data for using AdFlow. Some sensor references are available. Based on that, we are planning to switch the data from this platform to our actual platform. This is the planning. Because this is for testing purpose, I just created. I don't like to add a flow, but uh, for workshop, it may be helping you, right? So that's the reason I just added. So here is the old references. I'm just going to be rerun using Hive kernel. The table created. Table informations. Okay, so use the Wikipedia Wikipedia table or PY. This is the place. It just four, no record as of now. Because it's an empty place. So no records are stored into this place as well. What I'm trying to do, I'm just going to be write the data in using airflow sensors. Airflow 9090. I have to post my username and password. Okay, so there is a class called HDFS2. I do the class I just generated before. This class I have to sync. That's it. So this is already I would like to explain first. Same in code here, you can notice here. So Airflow, I'm just using bash operator and HDFS sensor operator. This is not a normal operator. This is a kind of sensor operator I'm using it. Based on that, what I'm trying to do. So whenever the data is received in HDFS, that particular folder automatically just triggered the sensor. So with the poke interval, so every two seconds once, it just keep on monitor. It's a kind of file watcher, that's it. Whenever the data is received, the file watcher will be get some acknowledgement to trigger that particular workflow, that's it. So yeah, that workflow poke interval has just started. So whenever the data is received to this folder, immediately it's just going to be called with set downstream with the task bash and task dummy. So task bash, immediately that data, whatever just received the .csv file, it will be migrated into our table, high table references place. <coughs> you can see the same place here as well. This place, it just migrate the data. Okay, this is going to be happen now. This code already I just wrote. If you want to see the code, you can go to effort DAX. Here the code is already placed. Just do the small changes. 
user file path as well as user file path. When our data is received, from this file path, that record has to be stored. <coughs> now it is going to be work with okay. Before starting it, I have to create the connections. Because it's the SDFS platform, right? I have to create the connections. I can use this one. So SDFS connections, I can generate here. What is the connection name? Is the host name we know. Connection, very good connections I have to use. And the SDFS, I can use it. Port number 9000. I don't store any username password. So direct open network is just created. Via this connection, our DAG is going to be bigger in the backend. That's right. <clears throat> so you can see the hash flow graph. Once HDM first sensor is validated, then bash run is going to be start. Once bash run is done, then dummy run is going to be start. So the flow of functionality is going to be happen. So right now I didn't start it, so it's showing null as I empty right now. What I'm trying to do, I just going to start this operations. So schedule for references practice, I just start every one minute once using cron job. So now Java start first is completed, which means HDFS is fine where the data is actually available. Go to the graph, you can see green signal means completed. If any light green means it's just running right now. So this is first run is completed successfully. So we may be see this log information as well. Sir, one doubt. Sorry for interruption. Uh, yeah, please. So this airflow flow is actually scheduler. You're telling, right? I mean, uh, uh, the moment mm -hmm. you you uh, enabled that job, uh, so uh, so it is like reading the uh, reading the file. Sorry, reading the information from HDFS and pushing to Hype. Uh, that is happening there, or like uh, yes, this scheduler every one minute once I just designed. Okay, so okay. what will happen? Normal scheduler every one minute once or one hour once only, it's just going to restart the process. Am I right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Here I just add some poke intervals. So poke intervals is nothing but every two seconds once this particular sensor is going to be involved. So every two seconds once, uh, it's actual runtime every one every one minute. Within that, every two seconds once, it's just going to be poke it. Poke is nothing but just going to be check. It's kind of getting some acknowledgement whether the file is available or not, such kind of operation. And that's the reason I already informed this is not an actual operator. You may be work with Hive operator, Spark operator, a lot of operators available. The other is going to be behave based on your time schedule. Time, what time you will be provide, that time only just going to be start. But sensor is not like that. Whenever data is received, it's just going to be get some acknowledgement based on the poke intervals. You're getting my point? Yeah, but this this thing we can do by uh, like uh, norm. I mean, air without airflow, we can use file watcher. Uh, we can use it. The same file watcher we have apply approach via airflow. That's it. Okay. Because file watcher nowadays is not properly available, so we will be using different different uh, operations, signal or or something is available. We are going to focus that kind of tools. Instead of that, everything will be synced together in airflow itself. So we have the option. We are trying to use it. That's it. Okay, fine. Thank you. So now I'm going to see this one, this path, right? So this is the path already. Sound five zero one record is available. Let me go into see this whether it is available or not. You can see before the file size is sound five zero one, it is not available because this is moved from here. So where it just moved our actual airflow this uh, high table path only. You can see all the data immediately moved into this place. So whenever the data received, that particular time interval is just going to be poked it and send it. So before this table is empty, I don't see any information. Now I can see the data using order operations. So last file records only I'm planning to see here. You will be using Spark Summit operator or a different different operator, you can use it. Whenever the data is received, automatically the operation will be start immediate. Got it? Yes, sir. Yeah, got it. That's it for today's sessions. Hope this might be helping you. What's happening? 
what is the use of uh, practice real time practice without big data plan right so all the flow we have noted on monitoring any question That's it about workshop. I don't like to make two hours, three hours. I have already experienced with the people. The people will not be get much interested to wait to keep on with the report more than one hour. And so I just make it a little crispy right now. So any questions in workflow? It's a workshop. You can ask me. I will explain. Then I will go with course syllabus and. So, yes. uh, Denise, I have one question. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, uh, so after, uh, actually I am from Oracle background, uh, working as an Oracle developer. So after completing uh, this course, what will be, means how I can present in Mark? Working with Oracle, right? Uh, yeah, Oracle. So you can integrate with big developers, mostly migration projects with the Oracle is going on. So you will be doing that first and you may be used to, depends on your opportunity as well. But you must know that, right, what's happening, say, what is used, you know, useful in batch processing as well as streaming. So how it will be help in the back end. That all you must know that. So that's very important. So this workshop is kind of uh, to help to the people who are also looking for job opportunity. They don't have much confidence to explain what's happening in real time, right? Then maybe we get some more idea. About it. Okay. 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 Any other question, guys? Denise, how many projects will you cover over the course? I will tell you the course syllabus and I will be going to discuss in some time. Just two, two minutes. Okay. If no question with the work, uh, workshop, then we will be switching to syllabus. Uh, Dinesh, actually, I have one question. So you yes. said something topic in that uh, something you said, right? What is exactly that one? Topic is nothing but messaging queue. So Kafka will be transferring the data, right? So that is following with the particular queue only. Otherwise, everyone will be sent to the same server, right? It may be getting impact. So what it will happen, it just store all the streaming data in a separate, separate queue logs. The topic is a kind of pipeline. That's it. Only that particular pipeline, you can send the data and other can receive the data. That's the use of that particular topic references. Okay. Okay. So here you can see this one, iPhone, iPhone topic. I'm creating the topic. Why are this topic only? I'm sending the data. Example, you are working. I'm also working on a different project. Both you are going to use this same Kafka server. At the time, our data should not be collapsed, right? So what we can do, you can create your own topic one, and I will be create my another one, a topic name. I can send the data into the same server. It will be segregated based on the topic name and all the logs. Okay, okay. That's it. It's a kind of partition for simple understanding. So how much data, real-time data is going to reach into the same server, how it's going to be segregated and stored into the particular log. So there is okay. a concept in Kafka topics available, follower and uh, leader, follower, something is available. Based on that, the replication flow also happening inside. But we will be discussing training sessions, but this is just a basic overview. Okay. okay. So in the topic, we are configure uh, address these things, right? Where they are consuming the data. That address also we need to configure in topic or something like that. Um, so we are sending the data, right? To the uh, so uh, where we are sending the data, that address we have to configure in topic somewhere, right? Yes, that's uh, it. Okay. For example, if a same you know company, the people are working for transactions, and a few of them working for uh, customer. So both have a different data. Both have to use the same server. What they have to do, uh, they will be creating this different different table, right? Inside the table only, they are going to store the data. The table is here like a topic, okay? But the table is a point of uh, batch processing. This is a kind of real time. It's a kind of pipeline queue. You can send the data and receive it at real time itself. Because all the data you're sending via network, right? Yeah. Wherever you can send it. Yeah. So all the data have to reach into the particular server with a particular topic name. Okay. If topic name is incorrect, then you cannot receive the data or send the data as well. Oh, okay. okay, yeah, thanks. Any other question? Uh, Dennis, all those technology you have used for this project, right? 
we need to down, download and install in local or this this docker is give it. you this image i will give you you can use it already the batch number also is available here they are using the same way so separate image i just hold somewhere so that image you want to install that's it i will give you the commands to install once you install that multi node practice you can do it in your system manuals here the different different image version is available i will give you okay that installation also i will help you you have to do it in your system once done you can do the practice so actual assignment is look like this is the way so my own 26 27 28 different different batch i just created right all the session i just focused all the information i just told here people will be using the same first for the basic assignments whatever i have done the same they have to approach with the commands once they have get some confidence they will be trying with their own data set that's the plan okay and while you go for the interview this is very useful just click on it and you can see what's happening if you want to particular topic you want to monitor we don't want to wait anything we just go to this point insert into the dynamic partition what's happening dynamic partitioning what is happening in static partitioning so everything single just to click and you can see and you can go for the interview like that we have created so this is the query this is the output this is the query this is the output everything will be stored here and say okay okay yeah thank you so performance related topic just to click on it and see your performance related experiment and map joint bucketing file format cpu execution engine metal spus lot of things is available in five like the spark also separate separate is available everything you can just to plug and play that's it what's happening what is the query you we have used what is the output we have not just everything we can see here this course especially for big data or like uh, right now in the market we heard about data engineering this is this is similar stuff or like uh, the i mean it's different actually yeah that's the same only maybe the people doesn't have any questions i will be go with syllabus now yeah we want to get fair responses um for this month okay so here the syllabus is available there is a link i just shared with you Okay, so the that course duration forty to fifty hours, and this time we will not be uh, meeting with uh, full stack developer with all the timeline. It's a kind of combinations. May I just go with the syllabus right now? So this is the promised syllabus. So here all the information I just folded. It depends on your multi node cluster. Minimum two node to five node cluster will be created. Depends on your size of your machines. If you have very less RAM and GP, we cannot go more than that because Docker also gets sometimes hand, so that's the reason we just play it. So how do I Pyspa, Kafka, Cassandra, Airflow, and sample projects end to end like this? We have done right. Same like we will be going to see some end to end projects, and then AWS, Azure, Snowflake. These are the promised topic we are planning to cover. But before what was happened, the full stack we will be covered from topic one to topic nine. Everything has combined together. As a pipeline, once AWS over, then Azure will start, and then Snowflake is going to start. So what it will happen? The session is going to be take more than five months, four months to five months, or five months to six months. The time will be taking more. The people also getting bored. So what we have decided right now, we just sliced and provide the topics like this: a big data engineer, AWS engineer, Azure, Snowflake. You can choose any one. If you want to choose with the full stack, that is also fine. It depends on you. So this is what will happen. The session is going to be combined together and will be taking on the same day itself. Example, that's the actual time. Part of session is going to be start, and one hour earlier or one hour later, AWS is going to be start. It's a kind of com combined. Multiple uh, batches of AWS right will be going to combine together on same day. Morning you will be going to study about part of. Evening you will be going to study with AWS. Something like we will be going to cover within a timeline. That's the plan right right now. But you will get the proper acknowledgement when the session is going to be start. If you are not comfort with that particular timeline, you will be going to join with next session as well. I don't like to wait for the queue and the learning time. Instead of that, what we are planning to do that we just covered all the sessions at the runtime itself within a timeline. We have to do a lot of practice. That's our motivation. 
but everything we will be covered. Each of the topic, what we are going to cover, all the information I just covered. AWS services, what are the services? S3, EC2, Lambda, Kinesis, Blue, Athena, Elastic, DynamoDB. These are always mostly used to AWS services for respective data engineering platform. All our services with respect to data engineering only. <coughs> Same like our normal Hadoop, Hive, PySpark, Kafka, Cassandra, Airflow, everything is a part of our bigger data engineering platforms. Same like Azure also, Blob, Data Lake, Virtual Machine, SD, Insight Cluster, Cosmos, DB, IoT Hub, Event Hub, everything is a part of your data engineering services. Likewise, Snowflake also. Snowflake, Snow, SQL usage, internal and external stage creation, Steam, CDC, Metalist, VSP Engine, Snow Pipes, and uh, Time travel operations, everything you're going to see here. And the session will not be theory part. Like today, we have discussed, right? With five minutes, we will be waiting for some time, and immediately we just start and go with the practical. Same like five to ten minutes, we are going to discuss about the theory topic, and immediately we will switch into practical session. Okay, because the theory part, anyone can take care, but we will not be wasting your time. Everything will go with the practical. On the fly, we'll start on what's happening, what is the use of the service, what is the property we'll be using it, and we'll be showing to you with all the commands with a practical manner. I know the value of time so that we have modified. So there's a the theory part and what is we are going to cover all the information, multi node and the course materials, all the day sessions has to be recorded and the practice materials, whatever we'll be doing the commands and all right, everything will be shared with you. And some libraries is available. You can read your own self studies and sample interview questions with the answers available and a mock interview also. Uh, during one particular period is over. If you are interested, we will be going to check with your mock interview. Okay. And each of the topic, how do what we are going to cover? Hi, what we are going to cover? Apache Spark. Apache Spark is very, very important. So we will be giving more time in Apache Spark and everything in a practical. Okay, so you can see this one. 96, uh, 96, 28, yeah. Something like Spark session. Each of the topic will be covered and that information we will be going to discuss. 28 also like this. So by Spark. Every day what we are going to cover, what's going to be covered by next to tomorrow. Something we will be providing some agenda that should be covered based on your syllabus as we promised. And Kafka topic. So Kafka, the basics we have noted, but what is internal algorithm architecture? That's where I'm going to discuss here as well. Ah, yes, especially we are going to practice everything with the Python and Python API. All your commands, all your codes, everything we are going to practice with Python related. I forgot to tell you why we will not be choosing Scala and the, because Scala is mostly used for big data engineering, not for data science. But you maybe get the opportunity to enter into data science as well. So we will be focused everything with Python and PySpark. For example, if you're going to work with uh, Kafka or Apache Spark or AWS, everything we are going to see with Python API. Hope Python API is going to be to read the data from our environment. Using AWS, how to read the data from the bucket, how to write the data into the bucket, and how to integrate with our AWS Blue, Kinesis, everything we are going to see with Python programming. Okay, somebody asked a question, but uh, thanks for to remember me as well. Everything all about Python. I am, because in interview also, you will get confidence to go with a Python programming. Easily you can crack it as well. Okay. Because under Airflow, everything will be going to cover it. And future, we will be going to add with the GCP, but we will be doing some trial and error and timeline. That's the reason we are planning to reduce our session timings as well. So in the future, we are going to add one more session for GCP as well. So all full stack, Hadoop, AWS, Azure, Snowflake, plus GCP, everything you're going to study in the future. That's our motive and plan. And during that, you're a old student, you would like to learn GCP as well. You have to pay minimal pay only, not much. Okay, just a 10 to 20% maximum, you have to pay to learn for GCP. To compare with others, you may pay very less one day later. Okay, the sessions is actual as usual, normal time only. Already the time I mentioned it. So IST time, 10.30, as it is in the same workshop time, you are going to, our session is going to start. 
on saturday sunday when is the new batch uh, starting yeah. is it tomorrow yeah tomorrow okay is there any big test batch also no we don't have big test batch already we overloaded so we will not be focus anything with the big test <laughs> please don't mind okay so already we are doing some pos and projects and that that are already locked with the big days so we just focus only with the weekends as of now once the pos and project is over we will be schedule the time for the weekend week days as well but not sure still okay so this aws data if we go with the aws data engineering how much how much uh, duration will it take to cover yeah everything will be covered so these are all right these are all will be covered yeah. in the same time line so every topic 10 hours minimum it should cover AWS, Azure, Snowflake, right? So eight to 10 hours, we plan to cover it because only the practical thoughts, okay? If it is a theory part, the same topic, the people will be covered one month, 20 hours, they will be covered it. But we will not be doing like that. We are going to start this process. What are the use of S3? How, what are the properties is available while creating it? And what is the use of that property? And we are how we are going to access that properties, that services via programmatically. That's the flow. Using Python API, we are going to call and read the data, write the data, or something we are going to do, play, play with that. Same like easy to Lambda, Kinesis, Glue, Athena, all the parts. How many months it will take uh, for AWS alone? AWS, AWS. Until this, almost 40 to 50 hours. That's the reason I'm saying, yeah. till now, one to this session, right? This all will be covered as it is on a normal pipeline. Okay. Once big data projects is the end, mm -hmm. One hour earlier, like 10.30 right now, right? So 10.30, AWS session is going to be start. 9.30, Azure session is going to be start. So parallel, we're going to start the sessions. Within the same timeline, everyone can learn it, right? That's the plan. Do you need to spend any uh, money in Azure and uh, AWS? Uh, or like, is a free service? Few of them you can create your uh, free tire, right? Then you may be using. But we will not be focused anything. Everything is we are paid in because our free service is over right now. Everything is a paid service only, especially Glue, uh, Athena, EMR cluster, everything that it is. Yeah, EMR cluster. Everything is okay. paid only. I'm using it. Kinesis, Glue, Athena. It's a, all of it is paid. Even Azure also. Cosmos DB, IoT, SD Insight cluster. Everything is paid. So if you have a free tire, you can create your free tire, but these are also paid version only. So you okay. don't have any office. Uh, uh, you may better, if you have an opportunity to work with your office, you can use it for your practice as well. You can create your cluster with your office account and you can do the practice. That's a thing. <laughs> okay. Apart from you cannot. So paid service, they will not be provide any uh, discounts or anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Likewise, Snowflake also maximum 30 days free trial they will give you, but uh, we will not be using anything free trial. All our free trials is over. Everything we are using is paid service. So, will you be providing the recordings? All, all recording we will give you. Don't worry. So because uh, certain services we cannot practice at the time of training. So when we do it in our office and normal, right? We have to do it very carefully. So that time we can prepare the videos. Yes, yes, exactly. These are the current VM images, Docker images, everything we will provide, some sample data set we will give you, and some other recording. Old retired syllabus topics like that we will give you, sample resumes, library, and other reference informations. Like we have used to some jars, right? That all will be stored here only. So the Kafka jars, something we are going to hold it here. You can use for your practice. So this is common. Everyone will get it. So those who train, join the trainings. And separate, separate batch there we have created. Each of them, they will be getting separate separates. And if we go with 28, this is currently running batch. So you can see all the topics, recordings, and its class notes, everything will be stored there. So whatever you will be seeing, right? Everything will give you what you have to do. You just want to start your cluster, Docker container cluster, upload your code here, and open it in practice. That's it. Okay, it's an environment free, nothing will happen. I'm sure whatever I do the practice, the same you can do it yourself as well. You can do more than that as well, I'm sure. Okay, so in the office environment, there will be some Hadoop admin to do all this or we have to do it on our own. Right now we're doing everything through Docker's. Mm. 
which we can do it on our laptops which is fine but uh, in real time environment will there be hadoop <laughs> admin or will uh, the hadoop admin will give you this environment as a data engineer what you have to do you have this kind of terminal right you want to code and practice that's very very important how you can connect via b line how to connect via ghai how to use spark shell how to you submit your jobs with your development environment testing and production environment everything everything you may be go with this kind of terminal one am i right okay. so both you okay. can use it so if you are comfort with terminal that is also we will give you if you are comfort with notebook such kind of my question way. is do do i need a skill of uh, hadoop admin not required to okay because mostly hadoop admin now no nowadays nobody is available mostly so like, uh, mostly in the back end the cloud will be taking care of all the operations so nobody is perfect okay so try to focus on the development and architect level that's very important more opportunities available with that only okay. and uh, after completion of this course what are the job position that we can apply for okay uh, usually try with sd 22 to uh, architect level up to manager level also you can do that but you have to do a lot of code experience and depends on your total experience as well so we have to go through with your resume and we will give you and we will give some referral as well some openings is available with our previous network almost we there is a 29th batch we are going to start so we have proper network so if any opening is available the people will be let us know and we will be shared with you as well can okay. you connect with previous batch so i mean their interview experience and uh, resume and all so that you will get some idea how to prepare for the interview and uh, what and the, if they are working then what what are the things we need to be uh, more acquainted with that that we can do Almost. yeah you can do that you, uh, if you need i can give you some references as well those who are complete and join the company um, okay. but we have separate whatsapp group you have for example you are going to join this back there are separate whatsapp group you are going to raise all your queries there itself we will be going to discuss and if okay. any openings we will be sharing to that private whatsapp group itself so it's a kind of co- collaboration so who else joining with you right they are, you are going to work with them and mingle together and you will get some referral from there and different batches so as a, i am a common uh, and the owner right i will be share some other references as well today right? yes yes thank you okay so referral is not a big deal only the learning if you know the learning very well you can clear the interview as much as so high level answer clearing uh, clearing the interview is one thing like working and because if, if i have 5 to 6 year of years of experience so so i need to work there right i mean uh, to real time uh, uh, we need to get some use cases so so just want to know like how what type of work we need to do i mean once we join the organization so mm, you i will give you once you get it right i will give you some references as well uh, my experience also i will share in a mid session also i'm almost working with this platform uh, data engineering platform almost 6 plus years is a relevant i'm saying i have total five years of experience so in this relevant and what are the things you are going to face it? if it is a streaming or if you are a batch what is their expected you that are we will going to discuss in the middle session itself i will give you some interview for the day okay and in the middle session itself i will tell you to go for the interview i will not be forcing you at last all this in the middle session once the particular project session is over i request to go for the interview and raise your questions because the same question the others also will get the same right so yes. whatever you have faced and you cannot answer the raise in your whatsapp group we will be discussed together and provide some you know, information yes yes sure okay. sure so like the field right thank you yes. anything else no thanks thank you guys okay so if you have any questions you can ask me otherwise we can close it those who are all interested just ping me in whatsapp the same numbers i just mentioned here as well you can text me in whatsapp and uh, do the same thing so tomorrow session is available maybe that's a free session only because you want to see the reality as well right this is a project session but real time session how it's going on that is also i would like to give you as a free trial session 
just that time, if you are fine, then we will proceed forward. Okay, same day, same time, you will be joined with the same meeting link and we will be discussing details more about it. Got it? Tomorrow might be a hard session. Basically, we are going to start with the final cluster so that we will be seeing in our sessions. Got it? Yes. Anything else? Okay, fine. If no question, we can close it today and we'll see tomorrow. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.